From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Layoffs at Laurel Schools after a budget shortfall will have those changes. And the latest on the homicide Sunday morning, leaving a 27-year-old Billings man dead on Shiloh Road. We now know more about that. Plus, the owner of a popular Cody restaurant is arrested after allegedly kicking a police officer in the head following a confrontation with customers. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Wednesday, June 26th. I'm Augusta McDonald. Good morning and we've got uh, Miller Robson standing morning. by yep. with a really nice day ahead. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day today. Our fair share of sunshine highs in the 80s and 90s. Maybe a little bit of rain later this evening, but that's ahead of the possibility of some wicked weather on Thursday. On the back end of that Friday, although it's going to be windy, trying to cool down. Some of us may not get out of the 60s, maybe something to look forward to there. But it's been hot out there. I said at the beginning of the week, generally all the way through Thursday, we're about 10 degrees above the norm. Well, we hit that yesterday with a high of 90, our low about 5 degrees above average, only got down to about 60. It was windy yesterday, top gust of 34 miles an hour. Still going to feel the breeze today, especially around uh, the Cody foothills, maybe Sorry, as we get into this afternoon this evening around the western foothills as well. And then for the next few days, as this frontal boundary comes through, it's going to be windy across the area with gusts 30 to 40 miles an hour possible. It was a dry day yesterday. We're in the hole for the month. And continuing to dig a hole for the year with this system coming through that's going to give us a chance definitely tomorrow of some rainfall uh, maybe not a whole lot of rain for some generally looking if I had to take a blend of models maybe about a quarter of an inch of rainfall more maybe to our west and to our northeast something we'll keep an eye on but we really want to watch out for that severe weather threat and we'll talk about that coming up 56 right now at the airport uh, the winds out of the north at about nine miles an hour 50s as we wake up this morning with highs mainly in the 80s and some 90s today a complete look at your forecast and what kind of wicked weather are we looking at tomorrow? We'll, we'll talk about that coming up too. All right, Miller, thank you so much for tracking all that. And there's some big changes around the corner for Laurel schools. Uh, in Laurel, voters said no to two levies this fall. That means the district is eliminating 14 positions to try and save $600,000. As our Charlie Kleps reports, many other districts are also trying to cope, uh, cope with budget shortfalls. Those cut positions came from all ages, anywhere from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, including some here at Laurel High School. And it's just the most recent example of the growing concerning trend in Montana education. They're teaching our children to go into the real world. It's one of the most underappreciated professions one can have. They are saints for doing what they do. Teaching and having the ability to inspire the future. But there's one big reason many districts around the country are struggling to find them. Teachers don't get paid near enough what they should. In Montana, that's especially true. Our state ranks 44th for average salaries and 51st in starting teacher pay. I'm very concerned about it. I think teachers deserve a lot more than what they get. And it isn't just the teachers struggling for dough. The schools are hurting as well. We really owe it to to the community to run as fiscally responsible as we possibly can. Laurel Superintendent Matt Torek says the district has been hit hard by budget shortfalls, forced to cut 14 positions after voters shot down two levies last month. We needed to cut costs and uh, we, we wanted to do it as early as we could. We want to give teachers an opportunity to find other employment. But in other districts, the impact has been even greater. In Helena, for example, more than 40 teaching positions were cut. Most school levies statewide failed this spring with voters expressing concerns about tax fatigue due to a rising property taxes. It's really concerning that teachers aren't want to want to continue to keep teaching because they're going to have such volume in their classrooms. Laurel parents like Allie Holmberg worry about the future impact of fewer teachers and even larger class sizes. I liked that there was just a little less volume of kids and so I mean, I'm excited and I really hope that things take a turn and they can figure things out. An uncertain future and one Montana school districts are trying to manage. Montana right now has to look at something uh, from an aspect of funding because we have to be able to compete. In Laurel, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Charlie, thank you so much. The nation's top doctor is sounding the alarm about the leading cause of death for children and teens, gun violence. More than half of adults say they or a family member have experienced a gun-related incident. That data, along with several recent mass shootings, prompting the U.S. Surgeon General to declare gun violence a public health crisis. Dr. Vivek Murthy has put together a 40-page document calling for solutions from stricter gun laws to community involvement, even talking about safe gun storage at doctor's offices. If we understand this as a kid's issue, 
that we will raise it on the priority list, that we will see it not as a political issue, but as a public health issue that should concern all of us. The Surgeon General says gun violence is also taking a toll on mental health. He says nearly 80% of adult Americans stress about the possibility of a mass shooting. Half of all high school aged kids worry about a shooting in their school. And Montana leaders announced they'll invest another $5.8 million in a program to support behavioral health and developmental care facilities. A state commission recommended the funding. This comes in addition to another $10 million already allocated. The money will help providers build or buy new facilities, upgrade existing ones, and hire and train new staff. The state will finalize contracts in the coming weeks. We'll continue to follow that. And in court this morning, we're learning new details about the weekend murder of a Billings man and a crime scene that stretched all the way from the West End to the city's north side. Our Haley Monaco has the latest on this case, including the name of the 27 year old man who was shot in the head and killed while driving down a busy Billings street. It all began in this area at a residence on Country Manor Boulevard early Sunday morning. An argument between two parties quickly escalated and a 27 year old man was shot and killed about a mile away. A drug deal gone wrong. That's exactly how the early morning homicide began, according to new details released. State of Montana versus Lauren Cody Smoker. 24 year old Lauren Smoker appeared in Yellowstone County District Court Tuesday morning after being arrested for the shooting that led to the death of 27 year old Dennis Rowland. Mr. Smoker, you've been charged through information with count one deliberate homicide with a weapons enhancement, a felony. You've been charged with count two tampering with or fabricating physical evidence, a felony. Court documents say Smoker contacted Roland and another individual identified by the initials J.E. to obtain drugs. After a discussion escalated to an argument, J.E., Roland, and another person allegedly drove to Smoker's apartment along Country Manor Boulevard. And that's when a fight between J.E. and Smoker broke out, prompting Smoker's girlfriend to call police. But the men took off before police could arrive altercation allegedly began over a drug deal where the defendant then chases after the victim and shoots up his vehicles with others others inside according to police smoker shot Roland in the head as he was driving down Shiloh with two other passengers in the vehicle smoker's girlfriend was in the car with him when he opened fire according to court documents they thought je was holding a gun prompting the decision to grab his gun and blindly start shooting. The, the allegations are, are obviously uh, very serious and very concerning. Um, the allegations also suggest that Mr. Smoker has a, has a, a credible, potentially credible self-defense defense in this in this matter. Smoker fled the scene, but officers later found him at a residence on Sunnyside Lane on the north side. His bond was set at $300,000. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Haley, thank you so much. We'll continue to follow that case. The owner of a popular Cody restaurant is arrested after allegedly kicking a police officer in the head following a confrontation with their customers. According to the Cody Enterprise, it all began at Cassie's Steakhouse. A customer allegedly threatened to kill one of the owners of the restaurant after they had to wait 90 minutes to be seated. Police say the verbal altercation escalated when owners Courtney and Randell Hooper followed the customers to their motel. A police officer intervened and say they attempted to arrest Randall Hooper at one point. That's when authorities say Hooper kicked an officer in the head. He now faces charges of assaulting an officer. Courtney Hooper is charged with three misdemeanors. And in Billings, the dangerous section of road between Airport Road and South 64th Street is getting a makeover following a string of dangerous crashes. <laughs> This curve near that intersection has historically been one to avoid because of the dangers it poses. This summer, the Montana Department of Transportation and Sanderson Stewart Construction are working together to adjust the sharp turn by removing a dip in the road's curve. Right now, the project is in its early design phase. The project's timeline has not yet been decided. Yellowstone National Park saw one of the busiest months of May in recent memory. The park hosted nearly 522,500 visitors in May. That's a 15% increase from last May and a 10% increase from 2021. So far in 2024, the park has seen more than 719,000 people come through its gates. That's up 11% from last year. 
In 2022, the park saw more than 733,000 visitors pass through its gates in May before having to close for nearly 10 days in June because of those historic floods. And in President Biden's first year, Congress passed the bipartisan infrastructure deal dubbed by the White House as a once in a generation investment. That was two and a half years ago. Scripps News congressional correspondent Stephanie Liebergen explains what's happened since then. Nearly half a trillion dollars in federal funding spread across tens of thousands of projects. That's the tab so far for the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. But the impact of this law is just getting started. We'll see uh, over the longer run improved mobility, uh, better access across freight corridors, and also just improvements to our economy and quality of life as our infrastructure network uh, is improved. The law, backed by 32 Republicans and nearly every Democrat in Congress, is wide ranging, tackling issues like replacing lead pipes to expanding broadband internet access. There's also money to expand the nation's network of chargers for electric vehicles, more than $7 billion for that alone. There are areas where it's just not profitable, at least not yet, for the companies to put them in. That's where we're working with the states to make sure that whether we're talking about apartment buildings in cities or whether we're talking about those long stretch of road uh, that you know that there's going to be a charger when you need it. A Scripps News analysis of the more than 57,000 projects finds the biggest single investment so far is in Baltimore. Nearly $5 billion will help replace a 150 year old tunnel that's critical for Amtrak routes serving 9 million passengers every year. State and local governments have a lot of control in determining where and how the infrastructure money is spent. And analysts say communities will feel the impact of this law for decades. That initial construction activity creates jobs as well as those workers going out, they're uh, going to get coffee, they're buying meals, they're purchasing clothing, that creates a ripple effect. And then longer term, as these infrastructure improvements um, are completed, you have the increased mobility, making it easier for uh, freight traffic to get from point A to point B. And all of those things help uh, reduce costs for the American consumer and improve our quality of life. Soon, Americans will start to see current construction projects wrap up and new ones will get underway. But this investment covers just the beginning of what the country needs, and it will be up to a future Congress to continue to pave the road ahead. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington.